We are live in the wreck. You already know what time it is. We got Hector Sanchez in the building. It's Wake and Dance, season two, episode 11. Yes, sir. Hector, how you feeling, man? I'm good, bro. How you doing, bro? I'm feeling good. Yeah, man. We're going to have a great show, man. Yeah, ready to smoke. Oh, yeah. Ready, ready to smoke for sure. Hey, let's set this off by, you already know, the number one intro. You already know what time it is, man. It's the Wake and Dance show. We'll be right back. Check y'all later. Pluto. This lock got me stuck up in orbit. New chick back straight out of portrait. Big ass little waist, no corset. Black card on me, no wallet. Everything on me, designer. The seats and the whips, they reclining. For leaf on the wrist, perfect timing. With plans here while I'm driving. This lock got me stuck up in orbit. New chick back straight out of portrait. Big ass little waist, no corset. Black card on me, no wallet. Everything on me, designer. The seats and the whips, they reclining. For leaf on the wrist, perfect timing. With plans here while I'm driving, I'm way up. Born, she's imported. Hey, good, she get rewarded. Trip, trip, place no pulling. You simmering, I'm scorching. I'm about that extra for the talking. I'm full throttle, you stalling. You just a local nigga. My sound from Paris to New Orleans. I stay away from the beat, but I want all of the smoke. Became a CEO while on the run for parole. I don't be loving these hoes. I fuck them the merch she wrote. Oh boy, we are back. We are back. We are back. You know, we got to do this sound check right quick. The audio was right on the music, but you know, we got to do the audio check when it comes to the sound from the mic. So, you already know, man. Hector, man. Got to throw you in the hot seat right off the bat. That was good. Right off the bat. Martin or First Prince? Martin. Okay. Proud Family or Boondocks? Oh. Ooh. Uh, uh, Boondocks. I'm going to go with the Boondocks. Boondocks? Boondocks? Power Rangers or the Transformers? Power Rangers. Power Rangers? Yeah. Rest in peace. Yes, man. Half Baked or Friday? I can't do both. Nope. Friday. Friday? Yeah. Why? What oh. makes Friday better than Half Baked? Uh, I don't know, bro. I feel like a lot of shit, but... Yeah, that's a hard choice. That's a hard choice. That is a hard choice. That's a big hard choice. You know what I mean? Oh, that, yeah. was, that was one of my favorites, too. So. Oh, yeah. But Friday, I don't know if I can watch that shit anytime it come on. It's okay. Like, same thing with half eight. Forrest Gump or Life? Life. Okay. Bernie Mac Show or Jamie Foxx? Bernie Mac Show. Okay. Family Matters or My Wife and Friend? I mean, My Wife and Kids. <laughs> uh, my Wife and Kids. I think I watch that way more. Okay. Wayne's brothers are Kenny and Kel. <laughs> uh Kenan and Kel. Kenan and Kel? I like Kenan and Kel still. So. Okay. I mean as an adult though, they'll be watching it now. I'm like, this shit kinda kinda cheesy as fuck, but it was still funny as hell. True shit. Okay. No, you don't know that much about sports, but I know you know about these iconic teams. The ninety eight Bulls with Jordan, Dennis Rodman, and Scottie Pippen. Or the Golden State Warriors with Stephon Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant. I'll see. <laughs> Ooh. Can I call somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call my boy right now. He'll answer that. <laughs> you still threw me off. You go, Jordan? You like Jordan? Still, yeah, I still, I'll still go with Jordan. I'm going to go say Chicago just because I okay. know it's, it's a great If team. you had a superpower, invincibility or mind control? I mean, in, Invisibility or mind control? Can't see me or I can control your mind? Mm. Sound like a pimp. I'll say the second one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Invincibility? I mean, invisibility or mind control? Uh, I guess I'll probably do mind control because it'll be the same shit as invisibility, right? No, invisibility means you can just go invisible. You can take off. You can, I know that. Yeah. But I'm so saying if I, could, if I could control your mind, I could still do shit. Like, if I was invisible, right? You got to do that point. You do that point. Right? Yeah. Now you see me, now you don't. True shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are producer Kanye West. Or Timbaland. Timbaland. Timbaland? I like Timbaland. Okay. I like mm -hmm. Timbaland. Michael Jordan or LeBron? Um, I'm going to just say LeBron. Okay. LeBron? Yeah. Okay, I respect that. I respect that. Respect I'm only that. saying it because I know I know a whole bunch of people. They <laughs> at the barbershop, and they, they, they be a talk at the barbershop. For really, sure. So like, For sure. Okay. 
Man, that was the hot seat. Thank you so much for the hot seat. That was a sound check as well. You know, we got to check the parameters. We got to check the audio, check everything is all right. Thank you so much for letting us know that the audio was all right. Now we're kicking it too. We'll be right back with the intro. Check out it. Smoking on some shit right now, I call it nigga, please. Stick it like maple trees, greener than collard greens. I wish a nigga would try to tell me about some trees. We are back. We are back. We are back live and direct. You know what time it is. It's Wake and Bank, season two, episode 11. With Hector Sanchez in the building, barber, entrepreneur, producer, used to, I mean, Colleen's own. Yeah. Now he's doing big things. Not saying anybody in Colleen is not doing any big things. I'm not saying that by any means. But he's on and doing better things. But we got Hector Sanchez in the building. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is Bye. Wake and Dank. It's going to be a special edition. You already know what time it is it's on Sunday. It's 3 p.m., 3.15 or something like that right now. Sports is on right now. So we got the ticker going at the bottom. It's going to be going to scores, go around and stuff like that. So we are staying tuned to the sports that are still going down. But now... We going straight to the New Year's resolutions, man. It's January, you know. You got to manifest it. That's what people say. Talk about it. Manifest it. That's it. You got to tie it on my face. Yeah. What's the New Year's resolution, man? Um, this year is really just getting everything organized way more than it's already organized. That makes sense. But yeah. It was a whole bunch of trial and tribulations I had to go through after I left Kareem too, okay. and just building myself back up moving to Austin and just getting everything situated, the networking out there, and uh, really just putting the pieces of the puzzle together now. I heard the networking out there is super crazy. It is, bro. What what significant or influencers or people with big networks have you barbered, talked to, spoke to, sat down with, chat? Man, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, being in Austin and being downtown in the area that I'm in, I'm next to this high-rise apartment that they call you know and it's called yeah. the buoy and a whole bunch of people moved there and there i met comedians i got david lucas that i cut up um there's a dude that manages mr beast from youtube this is manager so i talked to him get a uh pick at his brain a lot and yeah. get a whole bunch of uh, there's a lot um, you can talk about by sitting there cutting someone's hair yeah bro so a lot of discussion networking is is a lot there people that do nfts and artwork and uh, I know people that own water bottle companies that's connected to, like, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, it's just crazy. Like, you meet so many people, it's like, damn, people really out here working and yeah. getting money with you. I'm doing shit, but I'm looking at them like, you know, I'm, I'm step my shit up some more. Yeah. But it's definitely like uh, inspirational, motivational shit out there. Same thing that I try to be on, but bringing the barber culture to Austin down there, like, they're not used to it, you know? Yeah. They used to go in the women's salon and stuff like that. So whenever they get to the shop, they get to talk to someone like me and actually have a friend and a barber, you know, so you go yes. in there and get your shit fucked up mm -hmm. and, you know, but man, networking out there. Do you miss the clean area? Do you miss like... Always, bro. Always. <laughs> what high school did you come to for me? I went, uh, I went to Shoemaker first for two years and then uh, Ellis in my last two, I graduated in 2009. Um, you produce, produce beats. Yeah. Um, have you laid down any dope ass artists already under your beat making? Under I your... mean, so we we still been low key with it, but I got um I got Quentin Brown from Colleen on one okay. on his album. Um, I got a dude from Harlem, stays in California now, Claire K. Okay. Uh, and then also John Turner from Colleen. If I know who I'm talking about, he got some on there too. So it's been stuff I haven't really. Put anything out there and let anybody see it until I'm ready to, you know, yeah. probably drop a whole album with like different artists on it with all of these, kind of like on DJ Khaled, some Metro okay. Boomin type shit. So, um, how long have you been doing beats? Um, Making since beats, I was like eight, do some beats. Me and my uncle, yeah, my uncle is like four years older than me. Uh, we've been doing it forever, and it's just been one of those things where it's been ducked up in the back, but mm -hmm. it's always in. I definitely understand. Just ready to move. When the project jumping? 
you got to manifest it, man. So you got to say it. You okay. got to say when is the when is the project dropping? When is it hit in the scene? When do you like vision it uh, to hit the rim, hit the floor? I feel like before the end of the year. Okay. Before the end of the year. So yeah, basically, New Year's resolution is consistency, just dropping more planning. Oh shit, yeah, for sure. Like I said, just the pieces coming together now, and I can see it way clear. So. All right. so, not time. That was our segment, New Year's Resolutions. We're going into our next segment. If you didn't know, now you know. This is a segment where a lot of shit went down this weekend. If you didn't know, now you know. 74-yard reception from that boy. We about to check it out right now. Here we go. It's going to. They'll let him throw again. Wide open, Debo Samuel. Got a block from George Kittle. Debo Samuel, there he goes, foot on the gas, all the way, touchdown San Francisco, a 74-yarder. Debo Samuel. Watch Brandon Ayuk right here. Watch number 11 pop back into your screen. That was Debo Samuel with a 74-yard reception from Brock Purdy yesterday. The 49ers put it on the Seahawks pretty bad. Purdy? No pun intended. They put it pretty bad on them boys yesterday. The 49ers move on to the winner of the Minnesota-New York Giant game. We're about to check out the next one. That was a nice highlight. 74-yard reception by Debo Samuel. He checked out. He was like, Debo? His mama named him Debo? That's <laughs> 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 my boy Debo. Yeah, man. You know, you know? We're going to the next highlight. If you didn't know, Ja Morant went stupid as well. Ja Morant from the Memphis Grizzlies. With a disgusting, I mean disgusting dunk. Against McConnell. Pick and roll. Morant. Oh! Nice. Holy nice. Holy cow. That was it. That was Ja Morant with a disgusting jam last night against the Pacers. They won. That was just disgusting. And what was super dope about it was the bench jumping up, making it more exaggerated. I love the atmosphere from the Memphis Grizzlies. It's super dope. Ja Morant, like you said, is showing the hell out this year. I don't know if they're going to go all the way because I'm a Laker fan. So, uh, but yeah, <laughs> if you had any team, which team would it be? I know it wouldn't be the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> going to the next highlight. If you didn't know, now you know. We're going to the Jaguars with a game-winning field goal. Putting them on to the next round against the Kansas City Chiefs. And create one long transcontinental flight home for the Chargers. Meanwhile, Jacksonville can set their sights likely on Kansas City. Here we go for the win. It almost didn't look like he was going in at first. Got it, but there's a flag like, down. There's back. a flag down as that. everybody's running out onto the field. Okay. That was Jacksonville Jaguars, Duval County, Little Duval in the building. They came back from down 27 yesterday against the uh, uh, Los Angeles Chargers. I was about to say San Diego Chargers. They came back down 27. Justin Herbert is the first quarterback to throw four interceptions and four touchdowns in the same game. Shit is super crazy. We're going to the next one. If you didn't know, there's a new movie coming out. Not, actually, not a new movie. Snowfall. Snowfall, the new season of Snowfall is coming out. We're about to play that new trailer right now. Snowfall. Here we go. He's trying to bring this entire operation crashing down. What exactly do you need? Proof. The CIA has been selling cocaine in the United States. February 13th. Even after all of this, you want to think America still cares about you. It never occurred to you this is exactly what they want. Snowfall, the new season is dropping. See, John Singleton's vision is finally complete. And if you didn't know, Snowfall is amazing. It's one of my 
favorite shows. It's about to drop February 13th. Do you watch so far? I have watched like the first couple seasons and I started slapping. Oh! I know. So, Snowfall is live. Man. I know. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not. I'm going to be forgetting about all the damn show that's out sometimes. True shit. You had power shit. Yeah, it's a lot, man. The newest, the newest installation of Snowfall is talking about Franklin. He's turning on his family and he's getting out of the game. If you didn't know last season, I'm not going to give you any spoilers if you didn't know, but at the last part of the season, it went down between Franklin and his family. It went down. They split ways, man. Split. I don't remember that. I don't remember yeah, that. Last year, see, last season had a lot of great monologues. Um, he's an amazing actor. Amazing actor. He's also with Old Girl from the new movie Missing. Go check that out too. New movie Missing is about to drop. Um, her name is Reed, something like that. Yeah, Storm Reed. No, Storm Reed is with Shador Sanders, and uh, Damson Idris is with Lori Harvey. So yeah, Lori Harvey is with another one, Snowfall. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. It's a great pairing. Weird, but great, I guess. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I wonder who next. No, nah, man, I, I, I think she might, you know, I think she might calm down on this one, man. You don't think so? I don't know, bro. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're right. Somebody else might be hot next. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> next one, next one, next one. If you didn't know, Mr. Kevin Gates is nasty. That man nasty, man. That's seriously nasty. Like, above all the remarks that he's been saying, but his latest remarks on this new interview is nasty. I don't know how people feel about it. You know, people got some kinks. You know, people kinky. You know, <laughs> some people kinky. They just nasty to me. All right. But this one is nasty. Mr. Kevin Gates says he likes girls to pee on him. Here we go. I like urine. Yeah. Like. And I loved it. Like urine is for us. Like, I let you piss in my mouth. Then I come kiss you. I love for women to piss in my mouth. No, like you piss in my mouth, and then I come and tongue kiss you afterwards. I never had that done. <laughs> That's beautiful. You never had that one done either? What? A woman in your mouth. Yeah, I done yeah. had a woman pee in a cup while we was driving, and I drunk it. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> because it was just nothing. I was so infatuated with this woman to where it was just nothing about her that was nasty. Like, mm. you know, she's super clean. She like me. She drink number water all day. So this ain't got no taste. What? Oh, boy. What? Yeah. I'm thinking he's, he's talking about they on like a back road and they had another drink. But even then, what? what you... Nah, he said he just fell in love. He's that deep into a woman that she could pee in a cup. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's wild. That's wild. But we're gonna discuss that a little bit more, a little bit more, a little later, man. But we go, <laughs> we go discuss that a little bit more, a little bit later, man. But we go to the next one. If you didn't know, now you know. Like I said before. Yeah, I thought that was dude from Everybody Hates Chris for a second. Nah, man. No, nah, that's, that's no fun, man. You know what I'm saying? They are together, like he said. <laughs> Who's next? Lori Harvey is with Mr. Idris. Idris? I'm sorry if I butchered his name. But they are together now. If you didn't know, now you know. Also, they are together. Storm Reed and Shador Sanders, the son of primetime Deion Sanders, also the newly recruited Colorado Buffalo quarterback. They are together. And if you didn't know, now you know that Mr. Enos Cantor, that man right there, Enos Cantor, Turkish player, now has a bounty on his head of 100 million Turks. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is equivalent to $532,000 of American money. He has a bounty on his head. He said some dictatorish stuff. That's crazy. We live in the country that we live in. We have a lot of things to say about our country. But would you like to live in a country where you couldn't say shit? And the things that you said <laughs> could get bounties on your ass. So people that go out there and say, I hate Bush or hate Biden or hate Trump. You couldn't say that in these countries. You can't say that in these countries. They'll put a bounty on your head. Those words are words of dictatorship. That's fucking wild. That's crazy, man. A $532,000 bounty is on his head, man. That's crazy as shit. That is really crazy. Like I said, wow. 
Um, and if you didn't know, Kanye West married Bianca Sensori. Okay, he went missing for a little while and he popped back up in a restaurant with a blonde lady who happened to be Bianca Sior Sensorsi. That, that just happened. Yeah, they got married, man. On the low, secret weapon. She was a blonde haired lady inside of the restaurant with Kanye West with a ring on her finger. Then they found out it was Bianca Sensori. They uh, got secretly married. Kanye West is, uh, you know, he went missing for a while. Actually, he didn't I go missing. He, he was just standing up in his fucking business. You know? I thought he even got locked yeah. up for a second, but but Bianca is the was the architect behind the Yeezy brand. So yeah, that's sketchy. Yeah, but that's a segue into this next one. That's sketchy. Kim Kanye does not like Miss Bianca. She said from the start that she knew that Bianca had some hidden in the windows or hidden messages that she wanted to get at Kanye Yeezy, aka Yay. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Oh, that still sounds sketchy to me. <laughs> he, he went missing. Or yeah, missing went missing crazy. and then popped back up. Married. Yeah, man. Some people say she looks like Kim K. Some people got their tight, man. You know, you know, Kanye might have, have his tight. You yeah. never know. I need to see what she looks like. Yeah, she, she's tight. She's tight. She's tight. And they also say, you can look at the reports too. I'm not just saying that. Kim K says she hates beautiful women. So by saying that, that's another reason why she hates Bianca. Okay. All right, going into the Grammys are honoring the Recording Academy is honoring Dr. Dre, Missy Elliott, Lil Wayne, and Sylvia Road for Lifetime Achievements Awards under their black culture. How do you feel about that? Like long overdue, Dr. Dre, Missy Elliott, Lil Wayne. That's long overdue. They should have been had they like flowers. You don't think so? Yeah, for sure. Hold on, dude. Give me a second. I just got too hot. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was zoned out. Hold up. Dr. Dre, okay, Missy Elliott, yeah, Lil Wayne, okay, all getting honored by the Grammys for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Is it long overdue? Oh yeah, for sure, bro. They better hurry up because Lil Wayne looks like this. Oh, I know he's gonna get on that subject. I know he's gonna get on that. I'm just saying, bro. Hey, Lil Wayne just became a pro skater, man. About time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. <laughs> what, since high school. <laughs> Lil Wayne on skateboard, and he he's still doing the same tricks. Hey, 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 hey. let Lil Wayne live, man. Am, he doing bro. it. He doing it. We, he we he doing it. Him live. I'm just saying. He doing it, man. He like, doing it. Come on, bro. He doing it. He need to cut his hair. That's what he need to do. <laughs> Since it's still January, you know we still fresh into the 2022. We going into the next segment, the craziest moments of 2022. Wow, craziest moments of 2022. For the whole month of January, we are discussing this. Like we're discussing this topic because it was a crazy ass 2022. If you didn't know, a lot of shit went down. Oh yeah. Uh, ben and J Lo, they got remarried. Good God. Kanye West and his antics, his, his words coming out of his mouth. Tory Lanez or <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. Pete Davidson his sexual, you know, encounters with everyone. You know, Pete Davidson was slanging that pipe 2022. Kim K amongst other people. <laughs> Bad Bunny kissing the man. At the VMAs, that was really shocking. Kind of, kind of, you know. I you mean, know. it was coming, bro. It was coming, yeah. You know, I mean, you went from trapping to kissing that stuff. That's the music industry nowadays, some days. True statement. Uh, the movie Wednesday on Netflix hit with a pow, had everybody doing crazy ass TikToks and Instagram reels. And Argentina winning the World Cup that happened, you know, yeah. about three months. There was people talking about soccer that I never even knew. Knew about soccer, bro. What? You tell, <laughs> you tell me? Yeah, I know about soccer, but not like how it was. In yeah, Austin, like people was going like, like, "Yeah, man, Messi going." Will Smith and the slap, Chris Rock. Yeah, that's that's done. That was crazy, man. And Johnny Depp and the Herd trial, which was kind of crazy as well. Did you watch the documentary? No, I didn't watch the documentary yet. I watched all of it, but it's pretty crazy. It's really crazy. Yeah. So out of all those moments, what was the craziest moment of 2022? Will Smith and a slap, Ben and J Lo, Kanye West, Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez. I think the Tory Lanez shit. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Do you believe he did? Do you believe he did? I mean, uh, you're. I mean, you're, you're guilty right now in the eyes of the court. So I mean, uh, I guess he did it. You know? I mean, no. I don't know. You don't know? That's the entertainment world, bro. It's, True statement. So, crazy statement to you was the Tory Lanez and Megan. Not the slap? I mean, the slap. A lot of people say the slap. I mean, yeah, the slap was to you, right? That was kind of like, what, the beginning of the year? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then it, became, it became a big thing, like, going to comedy shows and shit, and everybody be talking about the same shit. You ain't lying. I'm like, yeah, Emily, but it's old now. It's done. It's done? Yeah, it's done. We're going to talk about that more. We are definitely going to talk about that more. We're going into our next segment. Our next segment, which is dope. Or no, which is our shoe segment where we talk and discuss different various shoes and uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, some dope shoes that are about to drop. So we're going to talk about it right now. Nike Dunk Multicolors. Dope or nope? Nope. Nope? I don't like that many checks. I don't like that. I don't know. I ain't feeling it. You ain't feeling it? I ain't feeling it. Okay. I give that I give that a dope. I give that a dope. You give that a dope. I give that a dope. Okay. Going to our next segment. I mean next shoe, which is the Nike Dunk Panda. It returns. The Nike Dunk Panda high top. Dope or no? Uh, nope. Nope. No, I ain't feeling them either. I'm not feeling those either. All right. Hey, if you're watching this right now, inside the comments, leave your comment as well inside of those dope. Or no, the Nike Dunk remastered. Wow. You are? Yeah, that's dope. Okay. It's just different, some different shit. Yeah, definitely. Color, color pattern. Yeah. Let me restart this real quick. We're having a little problems on the computer. Indirect, bam. Okay. <laughs> So those are the Nike Dunk Remastered. Are you feeling those or no? Yeah, I feel good Okay. Those are dope. Going to the next one, we got some Yu-Gi-Oh! Adidas Lowe's. Don't laugh, man. Yu-Gi-Oh! Adidas <laughs> Lowe's. Here we go. Bow. Yu-Gi-Oh! Adidas Lowe's. Those are Adidas. They're called ABI 2000s. Dope or nope? Hmm. You think it hard on that one? Yeah, I think they do. I'm trying to think the fits to go with that shit, but I think they dope. You think they dope? I, I like I like those too. I like I mean, those too. I wish too. Her, you should have got some other picture. What do they got on the bottom of them? I don't I think there's Yu-Gi-Oh characters on the bottom. See, I wasn't a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I felt like if you had Pokemon cards, you was that person, but Yu-Gi-Oh sure. back then was like, Yeah. Why you even got don't nobody want to trade Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> no, nobody wanted to trade Yu-Gi-Oh, bro. Yeah. I, I do understand that. I do understand but, that. I mean, the shoes are fine. Okay. We got the Air Max Penny 2s about to drop. They're going for 210. Do you like those? Air Max Penny 2s. Redrops. Uh, Retros. Bring them back. For the 99s and the 2000s. I think they're fire, bro. But at the same time, I don't think I could wear them. I mean, they're just they're bulky looking. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, for some people, I think they could rock them. But like, I feel like you about to hit the court before the club. Like, yeah. That's you. And then we're going to, if you didn't know, there was a shoe that did not get released. Are they even up there? I don't have them up there. Oh, man. No, I don't have them up there. But we are going to discuss them. Those are the Nike, I mean, the Nicki Minaj Jordan 6 pink prints. We are going to discuss those as well. But your favorite sneaker of all time, what would it be, man? Favorite sneaker. Of all time. Mm. Ooh, that's a hard one. Favorite think, sneaker of all time. I think you can't go wrong with like some like an Air Jordan one. Okay. Sure. Lows or highs? Um ooh. I don't really get too many lows, but I think both are you okay. one. Right? All right. First sneaker or most memorable sneaker that you ever got, either personally. Or your mom bought you these and you were like, fucking Damn. right. These my kicks. <laughs> I love these shits. These mine. Which ones was it? Mm. Shout out to my mom, but uh she fucked me up one time. She got me some, she tried to give me some shoes one time and she got me some forces. <laughs> but they were like two for a hundred dollars. So I already okay. knew they were fake. Ooh. <laughs> right. Okay. Still so rock them shits, but yeah. Air Force Ones for sure. Okay. My elementary school. All right, some some dope, just all whites or some kick dose. Did she get you the all black kick dose, or did she get you? Well, the all... you had to get the all black. <laughs> <laughs> you had to wear a uniform. Yeah, gotcha. you, you remember at the beginning of the school, you had to choose. 
two mm-hmm. pair of shoes, or you're gonna get the white ones and the black yeah. ones, or you, you ain't gonna get two pair of black shoes. Now. You do that for it. You do but that. Um, they're supposed to be white, but they're like cream. I don't know why they were cream. <laughs> That was a <laughs> that was our doper note segment, man. Hey, we're going to the next segment. Hey, I did not make them list up. Those are new shoes that's dropping this week, all the way to the twentieth. But we are going into the next segment. Bad baby is in the news. Only fans and our outlook on it. Catch me outside. Catch me outside. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> She's in the news, man. If you didn't know, recently she turned 18. I think it was last year, this year. I wouldn't she, even know. Yeah, she turned 18. I thought she was still a kid. She's still a kid. Yeah, you know. still a kid. But she turned 18, and she made on her 18th birthday on that night, she made her OnlyFans. It blew the fuck up where it made her like $5 million that night. You know what I'm saying? Now she's in an interview saying that the people that subscribe to her page paid that money for OnlyFans should be put in jail. Perverts, they're 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 nasty because they've been lurking on her for years. But my only outtake on that, I'm not for pedophilia by any means because that's fucking disgusting and you should rot in hell. But uh, I think she knew that she had people lurking on her. That's why she made an OnlyFans on her 18th birthday. I mean, for her to become legal enough for her to make the bread off of it. So are you gonna pay that money back to those nasty fuckers? For getting you that five mil? Or, like, what you gonna do? I mean, if y'all got anything to say about this, leave it in the comments. She probably got a manager and told her exactly what to do. True shit. Right? They know know exactly what they're doing. They said as soon as she turned 18, it's a wrap. Yeah. Which is crazy. (laughs) How do you feel about it? Like, do you feel like her statement is kind of true? Like, those are some freaking creeps that hit her up on her 18th birthday? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're waiting until midnight. <laughs> <laughs> like in a pair of shoes. Yeah, I'm gonna get that only friends. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get that only friends. Get that fucking only friends. <laughs> but yes, I fully understand. It was, it is, it is. She does have a point. It is nasty. It is per. Mm-hmm. It is pedophilia. They are perverts. But she also played into it as well. It was. Oh, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, she knew what, what was gonna happen, and she mm-hmm. know how some men are. I'm yeah. sure. Definitely. So. People was probably hitting up her inbox. Nasty fucking creeps was hitting her inbox when she was 17 years old and shit like that. So, like, 16 years old. But what's crazy is she's been putting herself out like that for a long time. Like, I mean, out there, out there for a long that's time. That's a law of attraction, huh? All right. <laughs> you do have a point there. So, what is your, like, major outlook on it? Does she have a point? Are they are they nasty? Should she take it down? Or what I do you mean, think? I mean, shit. Sure. I'm not I'm not with it like that, but I already know that she does kind of have a point in a way. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just about the money, bro. Two statement. That's it. But yeah. I mean, she should just shut the hell up and just kept it moving. Kept it moving. Yeah. I mean, honestly, fully, fully understand and fully agree. But money for sure. Money for sure. Going to the next segment, the Mount Rushmore producer wise, Jermaine Dupri just had a most recent interview where he discussed who he thought was his producers of Mount Rushmore. If you don't know who Jermaine Dupri is, he's the architect behind So So Deaf, and you've been living under a freaking rock. A little Bow Wow wow, brat, (laughs) so forth and so on. So So Deaf, all stars. It goes on and on and on. He's probably got like three decades in the industry. Four decades. Um, But his producer, Mount Rushmore, includes Dr. Dre, the architect, and bringing the uh, sound of the G-Funk to the West Coast. Then you also had uh, Mr. Quincy Jones. Uh, If you don't know who Quincy Jones is, he's the man behind Thriller, the most highest selling album of all time from Michael Jackson. Um, He's nominated for, I mean, he has like 28 Oscars. I mean, 28 Grammys. I wouldn't know that fact. It's just going like beyond. He has so much shit. A little Snapple facts. Yeah, a little Snapple facts. Um, Quincy Jones. Oh, Barry Gordy. The architect behind Motown. If you don't know who that is, that is the man who had everybody in the game back in Motown, Detroit days. Yeah, everybody. And his last last person on the list was that great man um, from uh, Black Street, Mr. Teddy Riley. Teddy Riley, <laughs> uh, the maker of the New Jack Swing era. 
with uh, so many hits. Go look him up, man. It's Teddy Riley, man. Teddy Riley. He's on Black Street. No diggity, no doubt. You're a producer. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of producers? Do you agree with Jermaine Dupri's list of Dr. Dre, Quincy Jones, Teddy Riley, and Barry Gordy? Who's on your Mount Rushmore of producers? Let us know. Um, I do. I do like his list too. I mean, it's a whole bunch of classic ass people that did make a big ass influence to him. Hip hop and still kind mm-hmm. of doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Shit, Dr. Dre is trying to sell his catalog for like two hundred mil right now. Yeah, well, I can need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep it. <laughs> the same here. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he did go through his divorce, where it took a heap of cash from him. Yeah, but he sold his right piece too, didn't he? Yeah, but I think she's taking half of that, so that two hundred mil might look pretty nice. Yeah, so yeah, he might yeah, he might need that catalog back, but yeah, at least half. At least, at least half of that. What so what would be your Mount Rushmore? Um I'm gonna go with like Scott Storch. Okay. Um Timberland, Kanye West. Um let me see who else is out there I really, really like. Um, we got like Metro Boomer still and Take okay. e, everybody that came out. Nav, Nav actually has some dope production too. Yes, he does have some dope production. I really hate how he, he raps the same way every time, but. Every time. Every if time. y'all know who Nav is, I think he's under what, OVO? Yeah, I think he Yes. He has some heat. Let me see. But yeah, I think those are really good at the top. And of course, uh, my uncle. Okay. To me, he's just. Yes. That's how I feel like he's one of them old school mixes like that. And, uh, you got like Pharrell too. I love. Pharrell. Oh, I love Pharrell. So I love like Pharrell. That. Uh, Tyler the Creator. Okay. P Five. Yes. Um, you gonna throw Timbo in there? Oh damn! I forgot about Timbo. You gonna know, throw Timbo in there? You not gonna throw like? I just said Timbo. Alchemist or mm, Just Blaze? You know what? And uh, we got Harry Fraud. Harry Fraud. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I mean, what you be talking about like, I'm trying to think what we're talking about top five. Top four. All right, give me, you know, give me your top five right now. Top <laughs> five producers off the rip. Your top five. All right. Um, you need to write it down. You got some pen and paper right here. That's okay. Two down one. All right. So, I'll, yeah, I'm going to do, um, we'll do Kanye West. Okay. Uh, Timberland. Okay. Two. We'll do Harry Fraud. Three. Ooh. He said Kanye, Timbaland, Harry Fraud. It's hard, bro. Mm-hmm. You got two more. Kanye, Timbaland, Harry, Timbo, and Harry. Hey, if y'all got a top five, let us know in the comments below, man. Top five. That's hard, man. Kanye, Timbo, Harry Fraud. Top five producers. Mmm. Mmm. You can put Alchemist on there. Alchemist. Okay. Very respectable. Let's do. If you're a smoker and don't know who Alchemist is, you got some problems. Okay. Alchemist. Uh, Alchemist. Alchemist. Who else you got, man? You got Kanye, Timbo, Harry Fraud, and The Alchemist. I'm going to just say... It's top five of all time? Or is yes, it's it? top five of all time. What's your top five all-time hip-hop producers? See, if I said like producers of all time, that is a long list, but hip-hop producers. Ooh. Let us know in the comments below what y'all top five is, man. We do interact. Just let us know. You got one more. We gonna come back. You want me to come back to that? Let's come back to that. All right. Let me think about that one. Right now, his list was Kanye, <laughs> Timbo, Harry, Fraud, and The Alchemist. That's a still respectable list yeah. in all, of course. But we're going to come back to that one. We're going to the next one. Mrs. Officer. Mrs. Officer is nasty. 
lady from Tennessee. I'm not going to say her name. You can see her face right there. But a cop from Tennessee recently was on the news for doing a nasty. Yep, the nasty. On duty. Okay? On duty and got fired in Tennessee. I'm not going to exclude her name. Her picture's on there. She got fired, relieved of duty, and cut from the team. Okay? Seven men are named in that same thing from doing the nasty with this woman. She was an equal opportunity representative, I tell you that. Of all colors, they was getting the business. They was getting the business. But she is on the news right now, man, for doing the nasty. So yeah. Kind of like, this, this some new shit? Yeah, this is new shit. New shit. Go check it out. All you got to do, I'm not going to even put her name out there. But all you got to do is just type in Tennessee cop fired for sex. That's it. But the crazy thing about this, out of the seven encounters that she encountered, on her line of duty. Uh, her man is sticking by her. I mean. He is a fellow cop as well. They probably all doing this shit together. I think they were like swingers. Probably some swinger shit, right? Some swinger shit, you know. Yeah, probably. Like they're probably all sticking by each other. No problem. Probably have some crazy ass Christmas parties and shit. I'm not doing it, man. I, can, I could not. First of all, <laughs> Do you believe she should be fired for doing her sexual encounters on the job in our country? I mean, yeah. Okay, that's number one. Okay. Do you feel like her husband is crazy as shit for sticking by her, or do they feel like you feel like they were doing some kinky shit? Like they were just some kinky motherfuckers. That's that's not why people are there. Yeah, on the screen right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yeah, them, them, them two right now. Them two. Yeah, they were the kinkies. Yeah. Mrs. Gonna, Office. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to keep it like, I'm going to let people just, you know, they see it. They see it. <laughs> they see it. Yeah, but like I said, she was an equal opportunity representative. Every color was getting it. Every color. And her husband is sticking by her. Go check that out, man. Tennessee cop fired for doing the nasty. Go check that out. And just Google it. Okay, just Google it. It's a real story. I think it happened like, Thursday, am I not, if I'm not mistaken? Only on Google, though. Yeah, only on Google. Google. You go anything else, else. Anywhere, else. anywhere else. I don't know. Just type it in. Call <laughs> something nasty. You might see their videos. You, you might see it. Else. You might see it. Jermaine Dupri is also again in the news again for a most recent interview. He said hip hop is hurting and needs reviving. You're a producer. You've been around hip hop for a long, 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 long. You've been doing it since you were eight years old, making beats. You've been listening to music probably since you came out the womb. That's what everybody does, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, is the state of hip hop hurting? I mean, yeah, I feel like it, bro, because I, I still listen to a lot of old shit. Okay. You know, when I want to listen to hip hop for sure. Because what, what's on the radio or what's this new shit, to me, that's not really hip hop. True shit, that's like rap. Yeah, it just, yeah, I mean. <coughs> Who's your favorite? Hip hop. <coughs> that was a great hit. What was your favorite? What's your favorite hip hop artist? Mm hmm. Yeah, like like Nas, like old school Nas. Um, I like I like Wu Tang. You like Wu Tang? Wu Tang love the kids. <laughs> Wu Tang love the kids. I like Wu Tang. Uh, Who's your favorite Wu Tang member? Mm. Is it Takao? Method Man. A lot of people love Method Man. Method Method Man has always been my favorite too. Um, I'm going go with Method Man for sure. Okay. Very respectable. Method Man is a beast. Yeah. And now he's doing all his uh, acting, acting and yeah. shit, right? It's dope to see him in like the. The power segments right. and all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. He's been a lawyer in a lot of shit. Yes. Like, it's a nice switch up, clean cut, but you still don't want to battle that man. You still don't want to. You still don't want to battle that man. It ain't like no iced tea on yeah, yeah. SVU Law and Order. Okay, <laughs> this is like you, I don't know. You still don't want to battle Ice T neither. I don't know. Ice T probably got some bars stuck in it. He been on. He been on Law and Order for like twenty some years. So like eighteen years actually. So like yeah, but I, I would I couldn't take that serious ever. Why not? If you were trying to battle right now, Ice T. Why not? Ice T is that man. I know. I know he is. Yeah, Ice T that man. I'm just saying right now. He still probably got some bars. 
What are you looking like right now nowadays? Ice T be giving us them two minute segments on Law and Order. He got two lines the whole show, but he get paid though. <laughs> he get paid, so you gotta respect it. So he get paid. I ain't say he don't. I know he does. Sure. Hip hop is hurting. I feel like hip hop is hurting. I feel like because it's getting overwhelmed by the state of rap. You know what I'm saying? The quality of rap. Yeah. Rap is out there. It's just it's so fast to make money right now, and that's I'm not knocking. Oh yeah, on for it. sure, man. That's that's basically what it became. Yeah. It's, it's too easy now, I'm sure. It's like, you can just, and a lot of times right now, everybody plays on the replay value. A person can drop a song that's two, two minutes and 15 seconds. You're going to play it back and that's going to get them more money. You know what I'm saying? Before it was all based on albums and quality of music and the lasting quality of the song. I mean, it's not, it was nothing like either making cassette tapes back then. <sighs> You know, when you don't try to get the DJ to, you mm-hmm. know, when once he come on, start talking, I cut the tape off so he can actually make a good mixtape. Oh, yes. That's some real shit, then. Yeah. Fully but, awesome. Yeah, it's totally different now. It's totally sure. different now. Totally different now. You couldn't even enjoy the shit. Not at all. Also, we're giving an update, just giving an update right now. Uh, if you all are paying attention to the show um, and trying to pay attention to the NFL playoffs, it is 31-34, the Dolphins against the Bills. The Bills are up right now. Going back to the segment, uh, the state of hip hop. Yes, um, I, like you said, the state of hip hop is hurting. Um, does you think the artists are, or are there artists out there that can revive it? Mm. You got Kendrick. You know Kendrick, left TDE, did his own thing. PG Lang dropped the Big Steppers album, did his mm-hmm. thing. His cousin Big Kim. I feel like he's a hip hop artist as well. Uh, J Cole. Yeah. Do you think? Like hip hop is gonna come back, or rap is still gonna reign of some like reign supreme. I guess it's gonna be everybody's preference, really. But sure. yeah, um, I feel like for for real hip hop fans, it's always gonna be our favorites to go to anyway. True. So like trying to search for somebody new is still like, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I think I think I think somebody's gonna be either a, like a new Kendrick, maybe. Okay. Unless. Drake find him first and take all of his stuff. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Don't let him come out with shit. Oh boy, Drake. Drake is you know people got mixed reviews about Drake. Drake people. is Drake. Drake bro. is Drake. Drake. You I mean, can't even argue about Drake. It's just fucking Drake. He gonna drop yeah. anything and everything, and he has and you you know. True. I think his word is everything now on the hip hop shit. Probably he got too much money. Too much money. But. Yes, if y'all got anything to say about is hip hop hurting and needs reviving, leave it in the comments. We do go back and watch those comments inside of the live feed. Going on to the next one. Earlier, we showed a video of Kevin Gates or Kevin Kinky. All right. Kevin is nasty. Kevin is nasty. We're going to replay that video to let you see what he said recently in an interview. (laughs) He already talked about the booty. All right, you know, Kevin Gates is already in the news about eating booty. Some people eat booty. It's nothing. That's uh, whatever tickles your pickle. So we're going to this segment where he says something about be wild for this. urine. Here we go. I like urine. Yeah. Like. I loved it. Like urine is for us. Like I let you piss in my mouth, then I come kiss you. <laughs> I love for piss in my mouth. No, like you piss in my mouth, and then I come and tongue kiss you afterwards. I never had that done. <laughs> That's beautiful. You never had that one done either? What? A woman in your mouth. Yeah, I done yeah. had a woman be in a cup while we was driving, and I drunk it. Oh, okay. Right, right though. Yes. Because it was just nothing. I was so infatuated with this woman to where it was just nothing about her that was nasty. Like, <laughs> man, she's super clean. She like me. She drink number water all day. So this ain't got no taste. Oh, man. I'm Go still, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and say what you got to say about it. I still just don't fuck. I don't fuck with that still, bro. Like, I don't think it's that serious, bro. I don't think it's that's like, I mean, can you imagine yourself though, right? You're riding in the car and you're just like, it's pissing the cut for me right quick. <laughs> and and then what you gonna drink it, bro? It's wild. <laughs> like just peeing in the cup while you're driving is wild yeah. already. All right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So the whole situation is just I don't know. That's some next level nasty shit now, I guess. Yeah. So some people might like it. Some people right now in the car are like, damn, I, I'm drinking her piss right now. Oh. Too. <laughs> 
Um, I, I can't get with this nasty shit. Um, people in the car, people watching the, the interview, probably they're like, cheers, my boy. That shit with is nasty. It's <laughs> fucking nasty. Kevin Gates drinking pee from a cup from a girl he just loves. Like, <laughs> like admires her. And she he understands I that mean, he is health. She's healthy. And drinks I'm, water. I mean, what next? What that's the next level? Next level love for real. Right? That that is. Or am I? Have I, I haven't reached it yet? I mean, I love my girl. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I don't know when I'm gonna want to drink a piss. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either, man. I I, I don't know when that time's gonna come. I mean, I I'm thirty one. I'm thirty one now. So I mean, how old is Gates? He's up there. How old are you? I can't let you know that, man. I'm not gonna let you know. I'm, I'm up there, man. I'm up there, man. No, that's all I got. That's all I'm gonna tell you, man. I gotta cut my beard because I got grace. That's all I'm gonna tell you. There you go. I'm gonna take a sip or something. That's it. That's it. I'm gonna let you know right now. I gotta. Get, there you go. I gotta cut this beard. That's all you gotta know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Kevin Gates. Is, oh man, Kevin Gates is nasty. That is that. That's you know, some people are kinky. Some people are freaks, but oh, shit. that shit's fucking nasty. <laughs> if y'all feel like that shit is nasty, let us know. That shit is <laughs> nasty. That is that's not even kinky. Like I said, it's not freaky. That's some nasty fucking shit right there, man. Kevin Gates drinking <laughs> piss from a cup while driving. Man, yeah, that that's oh. some crazy shit right there. Um, wow. Um. <laughs> I don't like you said. That's some extreme love. Um, I don't think I'll never get to that point where <laughs> I can sit there and say, "Baby, piss in that cup. Let me drink it. I love you." Right. I just don't think that's ever gonna come a day. Um, never in its lifetime. Like I said, the NFL playoffs is going down right now. The NFL playoff is going down right now. The game that's going down is the Buffalo Bills against the Miami Dolphins divisional wild card, which is going down right now. The Chargers Jaguars was yesterday. Like I said before, Justin Herbert came back. I mean, not Justin Herbert. Trevor Lawrence came back from four interceptions down in the first quarter to win the game on a field goal. Okay? That was shit. It was crazy. Shit was crazy. Yeah. And then the 49ers put their foot in the Seahawks' ass yesterday and showed how good they are. <laughs> Debo Samuels and Christian McCaffrey showed the hell off. Okay? Yeah, damn Debo. Yeah, and Debo. Debo Samuels and Brock Purdy showed how Mr. Irrelevant can show you how relevant he is. All right. And also the game that's going down like right now, like I said, is the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills, Cincinnati Bengals and the Patriots. I mean, Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens goes down later today. It's sold as well as the New York Giants and the Minnesota Vikings, the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers square off tomorrow. Who you got on that? Cowboys, you said you don't like Cowboys, so you wouldn't be a Cowboys fan. You know Tom Brady. You know Cow- you don't even got no football to know Tom Brady now. I mean, yeah. Tom Brady's Tom Brady. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So who you got? You got Dak Prescott or Tom Brady? Bah, the GOAT. That's what I call him. Bah. Like I said, I don't really watch sports. No, so no. I'm a, I'm a, I'd rather just slip a coin on it. <laughs> Fully understand. Fully understand. Mm-hmm. Going to the yeah, last – Segment of the day, which is keep it up or hang it up. It's like rapid fire, but we close out with some, you know, crazy topics, right. you know. All right. We're going to start off with the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl kicks off in February. You know, everybody loves the Pro Bowl. Used to mean that the best players would go out there and play, except the players that were in the Super Bowl. Those are the only teams that would not or players that wouldn't show up for the Pro Bowl. Now it has turned into a fucking competition test, like a goddamn obstacle course, dodgeball. Uh, they got dodgeball competition. You got some obstacle courses. It To me, it just loses the whole value. Mm-hmm. Before, the argument was he was risking the injuries, and teams weren't really playing anyways out there. But it was a, the whole factor of the All-Star game and it being in Hawaii, you know what I'm saying, it Aloha. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It had the whole prestige to it. Now it's just like – why the fuck are we watching this? Like, y'all ain't got no game. Like, it ain't no game being played. You know what I'm saying? It's just you make the Pro Bowl and you go do a bunch of obstacle courses. That's it. Yes. It's like the dunk competition. That's Basically like that, you know? 
That's what it is? But No, not a dunk competition, but they have dodgeball, like, greatest catch. Yeah. This shit's like, this shit's whack. So you're going to have be like having receivers out there doing backflips trying to catch the ball. So it's turning into gymnastics. Yeah, like a talent show. Look what I can do. Yeah. Oh, damn. There's going to be a lot of people doing that. <laughs> it's kind of whack. Should, I feel like. It's just sounding a little too spicy. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of whack. I, I don't feel like. They're going to be doing cartwheels before they catch the yes, ball. Yes, bro. I, I feel like <laughs> I watch the Pro Bowl to watch football. That's just how I feel. Like, I want to watch football. Are you still going to watch it? Mm, no. Well, Not all the competitions. It lasts three days, man. I'll probably see the precision passing from the quarterbacks. Okay. I'm not going to watch no NFL players play dodgeball. Yeah. That's just not, like, be- cool to me. <laughs> um, I wish they had, like, a fastest player. That shit would be fire. Like, a sprint out and see who the fastest player was, like they used to do back in the day. But, you know, people are pulling hamstrings and stuff like that, so they cut that shit up. But I think mm-hmm. they should just hang that shit up. Just, just cut it loose. Like, just cut it loose. Or just be like the NBA and have a midseason All-Star game. I mean... That'd be loud too. So you couldn't have nobody like miss it or nothing like that. You know, but Tyrese says that people should let go of the Will Smith slap in the shit out of Chris Rock. Do you feel like we should hang that up or keep it up? Like hang up the whole situation, like let it go or yeah. keep that shit. I think they should just make like some t-shirts and then just leave it at that. I said. <laughs> Do you feel like it was scripted? A lot of people feel like it was no, scripted. No, I, I I feel like it. I feel like it was low key, bro. Why do you feel that way? Come on, man. It's hard to tell though, because they're both good actors. And that was a strong slap. I mean, that wasn't no punk slap. I know, but you know when you watch movies, <laughs> okay, should sound and look like a real slap down. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it could I be. felt like it was scripted up until the point where he said, "Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth." Right when he said that, I was like. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, Will Smith also almost made me cry in pursuit of happiness. You do have a point. But did you see Jada's face? Yeah, but she also just, Jada. Don't, I mean, no disrespect to Jada. She's an amazing all. actress, but she don't really have that many crying moments. And her face was like that resting B face. Like you better go out there and fuck that nigga. Up. Like don't. Yeah, but you know why she? Yeah, here. but she also looked like that because she didn't have no hair, so she oh, looked. Shit. She looked more serious because she had no. Hair. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And the joke was in line. It was a funny joke. It, I mean, it was a funny joke, bro. But that's where I feel like, I, if it wasn't knows, scripted, bro. if it wasn't scripted, Will Smith was wrong because you're a comedian, bro. Yeah, for sure. You know for what I'm sure. saying? Like you're a comedian. There's been worse shit said. I just hope that they didn't use my man's to, you know, what I mean, yeah, the views and then did, did that did make all of us go watch the shit. True shit. Because I ain't know nothing about it. You're right. So I don't know if it was like, you know, a, a, a puppet move for them. And I hope it wasn't. I'm not, no conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just not, saying, because like, either, but... come on, bro. He knows damn well that you, you could have waited till after the thing like that. Yeah. I'm going I'm to catch you outside. How about yep. that? <laughs> right? That's what he should have yeah, said. He like, said or that. he should have been like, like, I got you. That's a yeah. bet. You know, yeah. like, you come on, bro. You walk on the stage. And then you slapped him, and he did a smooth pimp ass walk. Once walk he walked away, and yeah. sat down. My boy did a pivot <laughs> and fucking just went back to sit down. And no, I don't. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Like, come on, bro. He didn't. He didn't do anything back. Like, if it was, it but I felt been, like Chris been. Rock knew. Like, I got you. Like, I they hope finna so. Fuck you up. Like, I hope so. I know his ticket sales went up. Yes, they did. They ticket sales did go up. And a lot of people be talking about that shit all the time. Like, mm-hmm. And then who knows? Maybe it was, it was Chris Rock's last run that he, he needed the bread. I don't know. And he took the slap. But they do say, <laughs> they did say, and you can look it up on Google. You know what I'm saying? Go look it up on Google. They did say that he has a history of, I see, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He got a history of getting at uh, Will Smith for small little things. So, you know, Will Smith probably just got fed up with that shit and said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. You can clown the fuck out of me. <laughs> but keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. So, but I, I would have probably done the same thing. Just like I said, probably just afterwards. True. Yeah. Stephanie McMahon is in the news. Stephanie McMahon steps down from the WWE. She said, "Fuck this, Chuck the Deuce. 
I'm going back to being a fan like I was as a kid because Vince McMahon is back on the board again after his crazy, crazy exploitation of him sending multiple $20 million yeah, payments to random girls. <laughs> yeah, $20 million payments to five females, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oh, so he had to step down. We don't know. We don't know. So he had to step down for two years. Now he's back on board. Okay. So Stephanie McMahon sat down. So she's like, I don't want, I guess, basically the way it looks like she don't want nothing to do with this shit. Like she can't be for a brand that had to do with that. Um, and also the sale. It's rumored that a sale of WWE. Yeah. There was a sale that recently went down what with a like Saudi they, Arabia investment group. They sold it? Yes. WWE is not, I think, rumor has it right now that it is not owned by Vince McMahon. It is now owned by a Saudi Arabia investment group. And it has the WWE. Look at about turns like a Bollywood WWE. Yeah. <laughs> but it has it's rumored that a lot of the performers <laughs> of the WWE are scared because of how Saudi Arabia is with the LBGT. Oh damn. How they are with that. Their female performers, how they can wear their clothes. Oh, damn, so they're about to have a whole new wardrobe. They might, but people are scared. If it did go through that the Saudi Arabia group invested in this WWE brand and Vince McMahon doesn't have total control over it, woo! I mean, damn, it's going to be crazy. That's crazy. I'm going to watch it, though, when it come out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 50 Cent is in the news as well. Mr. French Montana said, 50 Cent's way of beef marketing is genius. Do you feel like he should hang that up or keep it up? 50 cents beef marketing as a genius? It always has been. <laughs> From the start. From the start, bro. I feel like he used this smart since the beginning with it, man. True. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's from, smart, but it's been from the, the the from the Jay-Z beef back in the day to the jaw rule. It still beef, go on. Still go on. They played his music at his concert. I've seen they that. They had people going frantic, like, play, take this shit off, take this shit. The one that was the most craziest though was the Rick Ross one. Yes. Whenever he had somebody smashing his girl on camera, and he was like the commentator on it, <laughs> and like took her shopping. Oh, like, damn, that's real crazy. Yeah. I like the first YouTube days. I feel like. I think yeah, Fifty Cent. He has a new. He has me new music on the way, as he said. He has new music on the way. I feel like some people like 50 Cent was still top 10 played artists of 2022, which is crazy. I don't think he dropped any music for 2022 and still was top 10 played. Um, so that just shows you his core fan base is still there. Um, his marketing is still genius as well. I mean, um, his show's going crazy. Still show's going crazy. Um, it's crazy, like I said before, if you have lasting music, your fan base is always going to stick with you. It's the difference between hip hop and rap and good music and so forth and so on. Um, moving on to the next one. <sighs> Frito Star. Frito Star. You know Frito Star? I'm high right now. I'm, I'm hungry. I thought you said Fritos. <laughs> like <laughs> Fre Frito Star? Mm -mm, no. He just got released from prison from Houston. Frito? Artist? Yeah. I feel like I heard him barking. Chicago native, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, but if let me know. Yeah, no disrespect. Yeah, no disrespect. And then we got the Gilly saying that old heads should stop dressing like new school niggas. Some people saw how the prince called them. <laughs> saw how the prince said Comic-Con characters. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like Gilly the Kid is right when he said old heads uh... should stop dressing? Like youngsters. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what do you think is like the perfect like outfit for old heads? Can they wear like the top and bottom Nike tech suits? I feel like, is that cool enough? I feel like that's that's a, that's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Do you feel like a Chrome Hearts outfit, top and bottom? Yeah, like a whole like the whole piece with the jeans and the jacket and everything. You're talking like that? Yeah. With the belt showing <laughs> and shit. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. OD. Yeah, you get like Balenciaga this. outfits. Yeah, down to the T too. Yeah, down you know? to the T. Yeah, you all for that. Okay. Maybe like a jacket or something like. Okay. Coat, maybe I don't know. But yeah, when you got the tight ass pants on, 
You got the last shirt that was on sale. Yes. That fucking, it's just showing, you know. Yes, it says Savage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> savage. Yes. You know exactly what shirts bro, I'm talking bro. about. Yes, man. Yes. <laughs> my boy, my boy Eddie, he be talking shit about them too. We just <laughs> keep it a hundred on the shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> Back in the day, they used to be the uh, Bugs Bunny shirts, the Thug Dot Bugs Bunnies. I had one though. I had one too though. I had a Captain Crunch one. I, mean, I never got the Chucky one. I know the Chucky one was real popular. Uh, yes. The Doughboy. Yes. I did the, have a Jeezy shirt. The Snowman. Shirt. I had yes. a Jeezy Snowman shirt for sure. For and sure. then they banned it from school. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, yeah. they did. They oh, like a, nationwide. They made too. an announcement like, if you're wearing a Snowman shirt, you cannot bring it to school anymore. I'm like, the fuck, man? It's a snowman. <laughs> and it's Christmas. <laughs> he ain't lying, man. It was, yeah, those days were crazy, man. So, like he said, hang that shit up, old heads. We do agree with Gilly on this one. Nike tech suits, you know, cool. Polo top and bottom jogger suits, cool. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But don't be out here with the Versace top and the bottoms mm-hmm. with the hat and the match of shoes. If you're going to rock the shoes, just wear some jeans as a white I mean, tee. if you're going to wear the Versace shit, make sure it go with the age. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can still be fresh with it, but don't just... I guess you just got to know how to dress with it, bro. True shit. Don't try to look like you're still in high school, I guess. Who's the my, most iconic fashion to you in the industry right now? Mm. That's a hard question. Like, I, I mean, I always like how Fabulous be dressing. Oh, yes. Fabulous always got, got some drip on uh, anybody really from out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's hard. That is hard. That is a hard one. I do get Fabulous top 10. Definitely. Definitely he's up there. Um, we're going into – no, one of my bad. Whoop. It was a great show, man. Yeah. Great show. Uh, For sure. What next projects you got coming up? Let people know what you have in store, what's next, so forth and so on. All right. Uh, well, really, bro, right now we're just uh, – it's a lot, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. That's a lot. So, yeah, um, just getting the brand back, just cutting hair still in Austin downtown. Uh, like I said, I've been stacking up clientele and shaking hands with a lot of people or to now uh, all the music and the beats that I've been trying to do and like I said I've been kind of keeping it on the low for a little bit but I've been networking a lot with people like in Houston and California and stuff like that or to yeah slowly but surely I'm getting that out there or to uh, probably just <laughs> you gotta keep going, man. I know you got some shit. I'm high. I'm high. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. So, all You're right, good. but no. So, really, bro, I'm just gonna um, cut hair just till probably like the end of the year or so, and network into the music shit a little bit more. Awesome. Get into like South by Southwest when it come yeah. around. So, in hopes to just basically get into that that little circle before. If y'all like, have it, if y'all have any opportunity. Any chance to go get a cut from Hector <laughs> over in Austin, please do. You already sure. know I'm going to leave the links in there, man. I'm going to leave the links in there. He hired in Jurassic Park tickets right now. I so you know. <laughs> This is Wake and Dake, man. You already know what time it is. This has been another great episode, season two, episode 11. Hey, give me y'all an update on the games right now. Hey, the Bills beat the Dolphins, and they move on to the next round, 34-31. And also the Giants are 7-7 seven, seven right now against it's the Giants and the Minnesota Vikings. 7-7 seven, seven is going down right now. Thank y'all so mm. much for tuning in. Our next episode is with Einstein, the mastermind from Coppers Cove, Texas. It's going to be a great episode, man. We got a lot to talk about. Einstein, the mastermind, is a sports head. So, you know, you already know what time it is. Hey, and big shouts out to the you know what. Same. Big shouts out to Private Hip Hop Headquarters, privatehiphop.com over there. Prescription, Ed, <laughs> Big R, everybody over there in the Waco area. Stink So Good is now on the Private Hip Hop Headquarters page. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Syndicated is going down. You already know what time it is. June 7th, I mean, June 27th, Andrew. And also, Mary Jane, it's going down. Check you check y'all later. Tickets are on Eventbrite. It's going to be a great episode. Next episode, Einstein the Mastermind. Mm. I'll check y'all later.
Thank y'all so much, man. My weed is bang, bang.